So you have a sales funnel. You got the process of being able to take a prospect and guide them through the various stages of a relationship so they eventually do business with you. That's awesome. But how do you get people to actually get inside the thing? That's what this episode is all about is how you can fill your sales funnel with your dream customers coming up on the Marketing Domination Podcast. So I said this before, it is my cheesy dad joke. Fill the Dreams was an awesome movie, but a horrible marketing strategy. Just because you built the thing does not mean people will come and customers will start putting their information in, booking calls with you, buying your products or service, downloading your lead generators because you've taken the time to make this sales funnel. What I want to do today is share with you the different ways that you can start to get people inside of your sales funnel. This episode is going to be a high level overview of the different ways. Then in the future episodes, we're going to be diving into each and every one of these topics in a lot more detail and show you how you can implement these strategies to get more clients and prospective clients inside of your sales funnel. So with this, there's only really two ways to get people inside of your funnel, organic and paid. Paid means obviously you are paying for people to come inside of your funnel. This is done a lot of different ways with paid ads or like paper click ads, display ads on Google, LSA or local service ads on Google, social ads, influencer ads, traditional marketing, like, you know, billboards, cold calling and everything, but you are paying to have somebody come in to your sales funnel. The second way that you get people into your sales funnel is organic. That means organically, it just happens on its own, but it's not because you didn't do work to get it there. That's because you're creating free content online, blogs, you are doing SEO or search engine optimization to where your website is set up in such a way to where people are going to Google and typing in, you just pop up without having to pay to be there, which is my favorite place to be. But those are the two ways or, or sources, if you will, the main ones to get people inside of your sales funnel. I want to break down my strategy. If I was a small business owner, I am a small business owner. So I'm going to tell you guys how I do it for my business, for all my businesses, and what I recommend for 99% of my clients' businesses. One mistake I see small business owners often do is they rush into paid ads before they're ready. And why they're not ready is because they don't actually have a complete sales funnel. They may have a website or a landing page, and then they start putting paid ads and paid traffic behind that to go to that, where one, it hasn't actually been tested. So you don't have enough organic traffic to even go through to see if some things works, which I hear the argument of, oh, you can test it with paid ads. You can, but my second point is why pay for something? You can get it for free. There are small business owners that are not getting people inside of their funnel just because they are embarrassed to post about it on social media. I'm not saying you need to make video podcasts and, you know, be talking in your phone and stuff like that all day, but you can easily make posts on LinkedIn, written posts on LinkedIn, on Facebook and stuff, just to let your family and friends know what you do to get people in. And so oftentimes people are paying for ads when your friends, families, colleagues, people that you already know would buy your products and service and hire you if they actually knew what it is that you did. And so the, the second one is, I, like I said, I don't want you to pay for something that you could get for free if you just took the courage, smacked fear in the face, and posted the thing about your business to let people know what you, what it is that you do. Um, and then the third one is the the funnel isn't complete, so you're you're driving people to the website, but you don't have a way, a system, and process to follow up with them, or you don't have that lead generator that we talked about before for the people that aren't ready to buy. So you're putting money into something. And it's like, imagine you have a bucket, which is like your sales funnel, right? And it's got holes in it and you're paying to put in the bottled water, you know, whenever you get the tap water that, that you could fill it up just with organically, maybe that's a bad story, but you're or a bad analogy, but you're, you're, you're paying to, to fill this thing up and it's got all these holes in it before you want to start paid traffic. You always want to start off first and make sure that you have a complete sales funnel and that sales funnel is optimized. So that's my initial mistake I see business owners make is they want to rush into thinking, well, I can just dump money into paid ads and it's just going to, it's like printing money. Like clients are just going to come out of nowhere. Like, no, all, all paid is going to do is to get what you have seen in front of more people. 
It's not like you are going to put money into paid ads and more people are going to start giving you money. It's just going to get more eyeballs on what you have. So if what you have is missing, incomplete, and not optimized, you are literally just going to be giving your money away to Google and Facebook. And I'm sure they would love to take it. But as a small business owner, to another small business owner, I don't want you to do this. So this is where I start, where I would start. If you come to me with your small business, 99% sure this is where I'm going to have you start. So let's say 90, 99% of the business that we work with are local service businesses. So they serve a local market. Maybe even if they are a, something like an accounting firm, a bookkeeping firm, and they can see clients from all over the world, they still have a physical location and a geographical reason, a location that they can market to. Even if you're not, even if you are an e-commerce business, a uh, like online fitness coach, and you, and you can work with people from all over the world, these same strategies apply. I might just tweak the order just a little bit, and some of them just won't really apply as much. So the very first place that I would start is uh, first, all of this takes into account, you have, you've done all the other previous episodes that we've talked about, and you have a completed sales funnel. That's the first thing that I'm going to do is whenever I get a new client, if we haven't built the sales funnel, uh, I want to go through the entire sales funnel and make sure that there's no holes in the bucket. Because if there is, I'm not going to be spending my time driving traffic until I know that I've, I've patched up all my holes. So that's like, that doesn't even count as step one, because we got to make sure that that stuff's done anyway. So once we are ready to fill it with traffic, the very first place that I am going to start with clients is local SEO. And how I'm going to do that is with their Google business listing. We talked about that on the last episode is kind of making that as part of the sales funnel, but this is the lowest hanging fruit opportunity for if you have a local service area, your Google business listing is an untapped gold mine. There's two things that you can really do to help optimize it. Number one is get yourself more reviews because whenever you go to search, whatever, let's say a plumber near me and it pulls up the Google search of the Google map pack, well, customers are going to look for the ones that are on the top and the ones that are on top are the ones that have the most reviews. This can all be automated. And this is what we do is whenever we get into the optimization part of building a sales funnel, we do this for all of our clients to automate review process so we can get them more reviews on Google. So they show up on the top, but that's the first thing is just making sure that you are asking for reviews and getting reviews and you want to have the most reviews from all your competition. So whatever your business is, you can go right now to Google and just type in whatever the industry is like accounting, med spa you know, lawyer near me and just hit search and see how many reviews the top people have. Make that be your new personal goal. Go crush them. Go beat them. Be number one. There can only be one number one of your industry in your city. So why not you? That's a thought that's been going through my head lately. Whenever I'm talking to my clients, the prospective clients, why not you? If I'm being honest, that's why I am here is because I ask myself that all the time. And, and whenever I, I told you guys a little bit of my story in the fitness industry is I saw somebody else do something that they didn't have the qualifications as I did. They took a weekend certification. I had a decade of strength conditioning experience training pro athletes, and they were making about 10 times the money as me. And I said, well, why not me? And Sorry for the rant there, but why not you guys? So, okay. So going back to all this Google ads, or, or I'm sorry, Google local search, optimize your Google business listing. The second thing is citation management. So what that means is Google business listing is a citation. It is a place where your business information and your local directory information lives. One of the things that we do for our clients is we blast that citation or that, that listing out to multiple different citations. So you want to make sure that not only do you have your Google business listing, but you have Apple Maps, Yelp, Bing, and about 90 other different listing places. So that listing is then carried out onto the internet machine. So what that does, I don't want to get too much into all the technical stuff for the purpose of this podcast, but what that does is it shows all Google and all the other search engines that a bunch of other directories are talking about your website, which helps local SEO. So if somebody is looking for that service in your local area, you show up higher. So that's the first thing that I would do is I would optimize my Google business listing and focus on local SEO. The second thing that I would do is I would focus on just traditional SEO. So again, starting here with the organic is just traditional SEO. I'm going to make sure that I do some basic keyword research, and I'm going to make sure that those words that my customers are using inside of search engines are appearing on my website in really good relevant places. 
I am going to do lots of episodes over SEO specifically. This is kind of one of my passions is SEO and automation whenever it comes to marketing. And so quick version is there's a lot of tools that you can do to use, do something that's called a keyword research. Keyword research just means the words that your potential customers are typing into whatever search tool that you're using for to find or to relate with your business. So there's a bunch that we can do with that, but think like your customers. Most of the time, they're not going to be typing in your business name. If so, your website should hopefully be optimized for your company name, but we want to make sure that we are doing for like med spa, whatever city you are in, you know, functional medicine practice, whatever city that you're in are near me and those types of things. And we're adding that city name in our website on what's something called your SEO title and your SEO meta description, which we'll get into that in another, another topic. But another big part of your organic SEO is making sure that you're adding more content to your website on a regular basis. The easiest way to do this is with a blog. Again, guys, I'm, I, I want to do a whole lot of future episodes about SEO and organic content specifically, but if you are a professional service business, I really believe everybody should have a blog. Even if it's one of those things that you are just doing a monthly blog post with some helpful tips around your industry, that would be better than probably what your competition is doing, especially if you're not doing anything at all. So that's the second place that I would start is just organic SEO, making sure you have what's called on page or just the words that you see on the page. SEO is set up. We can get into some of the technical stuff later, but that's the second, second place I would start. The third place I would start in order to start driving traffic to fill my funnel is your social media profiles. You don't have to be everywhere all at once when you're first starting out. You eventually are going to want to work up to that if you truly want to dominate your industry. You do need to start though. So don't assume that you can not have a social media presence in this day and age. There's a lot of different ways to leverage it. We've talked about it before. We'll talk about it again in future episodes. You can use it from an advertising standpoint of just think about it like a digital billboard where a customer is looking for your product and service. They go to your website where they see the social profile. They just want to see that you're a legitimate business and what it's like. The second way is more of a sales outreach profile. So it's going to be set up a little bit differently because you are going to be doing sales through your social media. But whatever strategy that you are using to drive traffic and to fill the funnel, you do want to have those profiles built out. So even if you are not creating content on all of the different platforms, I would suggest, like I said before, lock up all of your usernames for all of the platforms, build out the banner images if it's applicable, profile images, make them consistent. The, uh, the info or bio is filled out on all of them. It's consistent. It goes back to some of the previous episodes we talked about with that one-liner statement so people quickly know what problem you solve, how your product did you do to do it, and how much better their life's going to be after they do it. Have all that stuff, contact information in there, driving them back to your website. Then what I want you to do is start with what you already have. So if you are new to content creation with social media, start with the platform that has the biggest audience and make that be your initial focus. If it's a brand new uh, social account and you have nothing, I would start with the one that makes the most sense for your business and where it's going to be easiest for you to create content. So for example, if you're not super comfortable on camera and creating video content, hey, I probably wouldn't start on YouTube. But maybe you're an amazing writer and you're really a big thought leader in your space and you're much better at writing. LinkedIn would probably be a really great place for you to start or maybe like a longer Facebook post, but place where you can leverage what's easy for you. Because whenever you're starting out with content creation, again, another mistake I see business owners make is they'll try to sub this part out a little bit too early. And they just end up hiring a marketing agency just to create a bunch of general content that looks stock. Think about how you use social media. If you are engaging on content, you are not engaging with stock content. So don't think that you are going to pay a marketing agency or pay a social media company to do your content creation for you. They're just going to create a bunch of stock images and it's not going to be the type of engaging content that you need. The only place that that serves, that does have a place, but that is more for that advertising role of just consistently putting something on social media. But do not think that by putting stock images and not curated content 
on your social media feed that that's going to get you customers. That's just going to be a way of showing that you're, you're flipping the lights onto the building, if you will, but it's not going to be waving people in and getting them in. That is going to require effort to create content. And this day and age, I think one of the best ways to do that is short form video. So that does require the business owner to get on camera and to talk occasion. I think my, my side note here, and this is what we'll get into later is I think the best way to do this is video podcasts, just like this. I truly believe any business, any service-based business in any industry could have a video podcast to help them with their content creation. And that's part of the reason why we do, and we do coach our clients and we do help our agency clients to start video podcasts is for this reason is creating a bunch of short form video content is very good. And it's very successful in order to grow your brand online and to fill your, your funnel with your dream customers. That time commitment though is huge. Video podcast is one of the easiest ways to do that because it allows a business owner to sit down for 30 minutes and crank out a really good long form piece of content that lives on YouTube. And then we're able to cut that thing up into several shorts that we put onto TikTok, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, YouTube shorts, LinkedIn, and we're able to blast that content out versus asking them to create, you know, 20 reels a month. So I think it's the best bang for your buck is video podcasts for service-based business centers, but that is a whole episode in itself. Okay. So we're building out the, uh, the social media profiles, we got them set. We're spending time creating content where we feel comfortable, where we all already have the audience. I will say this, you do want to eventually work up if you're truly looking for marketing domination to YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, and it is the one with the most evergreen content. When you go to YouTube, maybe you're watching this on YouTube and you are searching for a topic. Oftentimes you don't care how long or how old the video is. You just care if it solves the problem. So that's what I like about YouTube content is it lives on a lot longer. Instagram, Facebook, if you are creating a reels, creating that short form content, it really only lives a couple of days and nobody's going to sit back and, and scroll through your feed from months ago, unless they're like an ex stalker, which you should watch out for. But YouTube, it lives on forever. And so that's what I love about that is if you're doing the work, you're a busy business owner, you're creating the content, man, create content that's going to pay you dividends forever. Okay. So that's number three. The fourth way that I would start filling my funnel with traffic would be, again, if this makes sense and this one's applicable to you is local networking events. So this is going to be, I think of like chamber of commerce events. There's typically like local business owner meetups and stuff like that. Those are really great networking opportunities to where you can, uh, yeah, make those connections, get those other citations, which is those people pointing to your website online to get them to start filling up traffic with local business. I'm a huge believer in local business. And so when my wife and I, we always try to support local whenever we can, we own several local businesses. And so that's a really great way to just build up your reputation in the community. The number was this, that was local SEO, the Google listing, SEO, social profiles, local networking events, number five. Okay. So the fifth one would be local paid press. Again, this is only if it makes sense. So local paid press would be, are there any local magazines that you can get inside. So I know, for example, the neighborhood that we live in has a magazine that if you had a local service business and this was your target market, that's a great way to put your ad in because it is a hundred percent identified to your target market. If like, let's say again, you're a plumber in the area. Well, this neighborhood right here would be awesome. So you can put your ad inside of that. That's kind of the first paid thing that I would recommend for, for people to start with. And the only reason why is that is kind of balances on the line of branding and getting your brand out there more, but it's a lot more targeted and you can have a lot more controlled and smaller budget with it. Typically there's lots of other benefits that help from a local standpoint with that because you get connected with other business owners and just really helps from a networking standpoint, but that is the first kind of paid thing I would start. Now, the next one is now we're getting into everything else is pretty much true paid marketing is kind of where I'd go. And you can see there's a lot we do before we, or what I would recommend you do before we get into traditional paid marketing. But the first is again, only if it's applicable to your industry is something that's called local service ads or LSA ads. This is done through Google. And this, in my opinion, is the best bang for your buck return on investment paid ad that you can do. So a Google local service ad or LSA ad, it's only available for certain industry types. 
typically it is the type of businesses that we work with professional services. So it's like real estate agents, accounting firms, personal trainers, plumbers, electricians, contractors. And what this does is whenever you search for plumbers near me, what it does is if you go and you do that now, you're going to see a section that says sponsored or Google guaranteed on it. What these ads are is those are the local service ads or LSA ads. You only pay for those ads if somebody clicks to call you or clicks to message you. And you can enable or disable messages if you only want people to call you. But for your ad to show up, you don't pay for it. You only pay when you actually get the lead. And so they actually, through LSA with Google, you get your whole like backend dashboard to where they'll help you keep track of this. And even if you start getting too many spam requests and stuff through it, where it's just like cold callers calling you and stuff, you can actually dispute those and get your money back for those. So that is where I would love for clients to start whenever they're starting paid ads, because the people that are seeing that are, they are looking for your specific industry near them. You can pick your targeting area to your, your service area. So if somebody is looking for a real estate agent, in Owasso or, you know, a plumber in Tulsa, you can set your service area to that. So you're only getting calls and messages from people that are searching that in that market. So it is the best way of getting very highly qualified and hot leads through Google LSA. Now, because they are super highly qualified, you do pay more per lead, but typically it is a, uh, it's, financially it's way worth that versus like a traditional PPC or pay per click ad that you would see on Google, just because it's a much more qualified lead. So that's the next thing that I would do after I have those LSA ads in place. And again, those are only applicable for certain industry types. Uh, Google's always updating that. So make sure you look online to see if your business is eligible. And if so, and you got those other things in place, definitely recommend getting that started. The next one is PPC ads or pay per click ads. This is what you would think of a traditional Google ads. So you're searching for, you know, accounting near me or a bookkeeper or Wasso or something like that. Well, that's where you're going to see the little sponsored ads on there. You can do sponsored map pack listings to where your listing shows up. These are the, the, the way to where you can kind of use this as well to help accelerate some of the SEO. So you're running pay per ads, pay per click ads against some of the same terms that you're trying to rank for on SEO. It can definitely help you to show up for that a lot more if you're organically ranking. Plus you get the paid search as well. Pay per click ads, I think are, are, are a good way to start generating more traffic that is going to typically be more cold traffic. They're, they're looking for something associated to your product and service and not necessarily your direct service, but you can combine these things. So for example, you can run an LSA ad for, you know, med spa, if you're, if that category is applicable for you, and then you can also run pay-per-click ads for med spa as well, and hopefully organically rank for those things. So that's where all of these things really start linking in and stacking together. So, all right. So after we've done that, then we're finally going to get into where, unfortunately, most business owners start, and that is social ads. And social ads, whenever it comes to them, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube ads, I don't want to start with cold ads. I think that is, and you're going to see, that's actually a quick version. That's the last place you should start with doing any paid ad strategy is cold ads on Facebook or, or Instagram, YouTube. Where I would start if you're doing social ads is start with retargeting ads. So what that means is you are going to put this thing on your website. It's called a pixel. Everybody kind of calls it a little something. I think YouTube calls it something else like a tag maybe. I don't know. But what it does is it makes it to where whenever you show these social ads or these YouTube ads, that it only shows it to people that have gone to your website already. So that way they are more warm traffic. So your cost is going to, you're not going to be wasting as much money trying to convert somebody that doesn't even know your, your brand or who you exist. All you're going to be using those social ads for is following up and retargeting people that have already shown interest and come to your website. But for some reason they didn't book a call or hire you or assessment, whatever your call to action is. That's where I would start with social ads. The next way. So, so far recap, start with your Google business listing, start with local SEO, then social profiles, build them out then do local networking events, then local paid press, if it makes sense, local service ads, if your business is eligible, pay-per-click ads, retargeting social ads. Number nine is local traditional marketing. And this is again, if it makes sense. So local traditional marketing, this is going to be where we're going to think about 
of billboard ads, radio ads, TV ads, traditional things, maybe sponsoring like a stadium at a local high school where you can buy billboard ads and stuff on this. This is the next place that I would do that. That is, again, it kind of goes back a little bit to the paid press that I talked about doing earlier, but these why I put these further down the funnel is these are typically much larger purchases. If you're thinking about signing a billboard contract, it, it's easy to spend, you know, upwards of thousand dollars plus a month just for, and it's going to be at least a 12 month commitment typically. So that's 12 K for that. I wouldn't recommend that until we put money behind some of these other strategies first, because that is a longer term investment. It does get a little bit less expensive now, especially there are so many billboards or those digital billboards to where you're sharing that ad space with several different people. But I mean that TV ads, uh, local TV ads, even things like Hulu ads and stuff, they are more expensive. So I put them further down on the list because I want my clients to test with other things first before we start dumping money into this. And so the last thing, the 10th way that I would start filling your traffic would be, like I said earlier, the cold traffic social ads. So these are people that don't even know who you are. They don't know your brand. They're unfamiliar with your brand. They're familiar with the product or the service, but they don't know your brand. They know they need an accountant. They know they need a plumber. They know, you know, they might want Botox or a functional medicine provider, but they don't know your brand. These would be cold social ads. And these would be one of the last things that I would do. But unfortunately, that is where most business owners start is they see, they, they see an ad about how they need to be doing ads. And so they hire somebody, they don't have any of this other stuff in place. They don't have a complete marketing funnel. They're doing everything all out of order and they just end up wasting money and they're frustrated because they're not getting their leads. So quick recap, guys, you have a sales, just because you have a sales funnel does not mean people are going to fill it up and start giving you money, start booking appointments and downloading your lead generator. You have to be intentional with a strategy in order to get people to come in. The most important thing with it is that whatever you do, you are consistent. If you are posting a bunch of content on, online for a while and then you stop, it's not going to work. If you're running paid ads for a while and then you stop, it's not going to work. You need to be consistent with how you are filling your sales funnel so you can avoid the ups and downs of your business and you get a consistent stream of leads that come in. Other, less, another thing that I will say too about why I want to start with organic versus paid. The other thing with all this organic stuff, guys, it's, it does take longer to build up, but as it builds up, it gets stronger. And so if you put the work in and, and then you put all of these things in place from a, you know, good content strategy and, and SEO and local SEO, that stuff is permanent. Once you built that foundation, it's permanent with paid. It's great, but it only works as long as you're paying for it. As soon as you, if you did SEO for six to 12 months and you created a bunch of content on your website and you started ranking for keywords and you stop it, you're going to slowly drop off because competitors are going to, going to uh, take over the market share, but it's not just going to stop with paid ads. Whenever you stop paid ads, nobody's going to see it. So that work is lost. Nobody's going to see those ads again. SEO articles, you can repurpose those for social content. Social content, you can repost and share as part of your sales process. So it's always going to serve you if you build up a good, strong organic strategy, which is why I want people to and always encourage clients to start there because I want them to have a long-term sustainable, successful business, not just try to get something quick and then it not be able to be sustainable for them. So Hope this added value to you guys. This is where I would start in my high level overview of filling your sales funnel with leads. In the next coming episodes, we are going to go through some of these topics individually, break them down a lot more so you guys can get some step-by-step -step guides on what you can do as a small business owner to fill your sales funnel with your dream customers. Have an awesome day.